Good morning. Welcome to Happy Trails Christian Fellowship, uh, our Sunday morning service. We're glad that you're here, glad that you've chosen to be a part of our service this morning. Uh, you saw the announcement slides, and, and we hope that uh, any of those things that you needed to write down, you were able to do so. A um, couple of more announcements, the uh, community connection training, and, and that there was a slide about that. Just to let you know that that's been, uh, the date for the training has been changed to the 27th, and uh, boy, we are so pleased with the um, interest in, in, in this training, interest in becoming a leader of one of these groups, however it may look, and uh, we've got uh, 15 people signed up and we are just uh, delighted with that so if you're if you're watching this video and you have not signed up and you would like to by by all means uh, give uh, dorothy or or john chocote a sign uh, a call and uh, they'll sign you up you know you also saw a an announcement about the choices pregnancy center B baby bottle drive and that runs from the 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 7th of February, which has already passed, through March 7th. And uh, the directions of what to do are inside the bottles. If you would like to have one of those bottles, please contact Roberta Smith or Dorothy Newburn, and their phone numbers were on that slide. Uh, or you can call the, the church office and they'll give you those numbers. And uh, they'll, they'll make sure that you have one of those baby bottles. Now I want to address something that's sort of like the elephant in the room, uh, about uh, the decision that the last at the last board mem meeting resort board meeting concerning the fellowship and uh, and so I want I want to address two two groups I first I want to address the the resort board and, and 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 please resort board know that I'm doing this with respect and appreciation uh, and but I just want to make the point and I've thought a lot about this because the statement was made that, that we, and I think that's a fair statement, that we don't treat clubs differently. That whatever we do for the fellowship, we need to do for other, other clubs and, and vice versa. And the statement was made that, that we need to be perfectly fair. But I wanna, wanna say that, that all the other clubs in the resort if, if they had a 10 hour day from seven in the morning till five in the evening, that they could be playing pickleball or tennis or in the quilting room or in billiards or whatever club they, they belong to, they have 70 hours that they can use to um, graciously include all the different members of their, of their club throughout the week. The fellowship has one hour one hour every week. And so to limit our, our occupancy to 50 would tell us that we can have, allow someone to go to church once every two months. And so our position in that course would be to say, we either all come to the, to the ballroom or none of us come to the ballroom. And that's why we're recording this rather than than uh, being in the ballroom. Now, later on, we may switch back to live streaming from the ballroom, but we're not going to meet together until we can all meet together. And I just want to, to say to the resort board that, that I personally do not feel like that, that I've been or the fellowship has been treated fairly because we have one, one hour in a week to uh, give those who are hungry for it spiritual sustenance and, uh, and we're just not going to be fascinating putting somebody at the, at the door so that some, some uh, soul might come who needs ministered to. Maybe they've lost a loved one. Maybe they're, they're in, uh, feeling lonely or depressed and they need spiritual sustenance. We're not going to send them away. We're just not going to do that. And uh, I hear the pickleball uh, club members playing uh, pickleball and laughing and having a good time and they do so throughout the day and and we can't do that we have one hour uh, to do that and so uh, we would like you to uh, I would like you to to um, rethink that that decision I don't I don't believe it's fair now let me turn from the re, from the resort board to 
uh, members of Happy Trails Christian Fellowship. And I want to say this to you, is that we cannot, and I don't think it's right, to consider anything, any decision the board has made as personally against us. Um, there, the board is is discussing, and and uh, I might disagree with with the way that the the CDC numbers are interpreted, or Governor Ducey's uh, statements are interpreted. But I'm not responsible to make decisions regarding the resort. That board is, and so my responsibility is to treat every member of the board with respect and to uh, cooperate with the authority of, of the resort board. And I, I intend to do that. And I'm asking each one of you to do the same thing, that you will be Christ-like in, in uh, your approach to, to the board. And even when we're talking to other people, and I know that, that when we're upset with decisions that we're prone to, to, to natter on among ourselves, and, and I'm as guilty as anyone, but we need to minimize that. And know that it's not a personal thing. It feels personal, but it's not. And so uh, we need to, to, to pray for the resort board and cooperate and, and treat each one with, with respect. Well, I'm glad that you're here today. I'm glad that uh, you're choosing to worship together. And so let's use uh, this next uh, song. And, and the choir uh, has uh, decided to help us out here. And they're going to lead us in our first uh, song. Jesus loves me, and then after the choir finishes, Pastor Mac is going to come and pray for us. So let's let the choir lead us in Jesus loves me. Blocking everybody that's, out. That's okay. They're not standing yeah, up. That's okay. Aren't you glad Jesus loves you? What a privilege to be loved by God. And he does. You know, I have developed kind of a mischievous habit. I get a lot of spam calls. And so quite often now when a spam call comes and there's that lag when they answer, I say to them, do you know Jesus loves you? He's got a great plan for your life. And usually they hang up. But yesterday, someone said, tell me about this. What a great opportunity. I don't know if you get those calls, but uh, it's a great chance for us to tell them Jesus loves you. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own gentle way. Lord, we invite you in to be a part of this total service that your name will be magnified in everything we say and do 
we commit this service this day to you. And Father, we pray for those in leadership and pastor just said a moment ago, we need to pray for those in authority. Father, from national level to local level, we pray that you would minister to them. And Father, we pray that you would simply guide and direct not only their thoughts, but the things they say. And Father, might you begin to impress upon their hearts and their minds your love and your grace as you lead them for your honor and for your glory. Lord, we pray for those of our fellowship who are in need, and we pray for Annette Vanderjack today. God, her surgery's been delayed. So, Father, I pray that you would just simply minister to, to she and Don. God, that it's totally within the realm of your possibility to bring total healing during this time minister to them we pray and god there are so many others of our fellowship many who've lost loved ones might your comfort embrace them lord might your peace embrace them and father i pray that as it does they will sense your arms of love around them holding them tight god we thank you for that and lord i pray that as you minister not just here locally, but in the parts spread across America and Canada, that each of us would sense your hand of love upon us. And Lord, you taught us to pray. Our Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. We pray this, Father, in your name. Amen.
Thank you, choir. We uh, appreciate you leading us in that, uh, in that great, great hymn, Love Lifted Me. And um, we need that love. And I, I so appreciate this passage that we're going to deal with today. Hope in the here and now is really what we need, is really what we want. And there's all kinds of things going on around us. It seems like the political movement is just never going to get any better. But, uh, you know, they're, they're doing what, what they do there in Washington, D.C., and we need to let them do that. The, the athletic uh, situation is, is there's a lot of upheaval in that, and there's just a lot of turmoil conflict, really, wherever we look around us. And, uh, and then we're dealing with the reality of, the, of COVID-19. Uh, some of us have gotten the, the vaccinations uh, that's available. Some have not yet been able to do that. Some are deciding not to get the vaccination. So we've just got a lot of turmoil around us. Well, the wonderful thing about the teaching of Romans chapter 8 in this, this particular passage is, is that regardless of circumstances, uh, God is with us in the here and now. Uh, right now, today, in 2021, as we move uh, through February, God is with us. And so I want to read this passage, and I didn't put the, the uh, scripture slides in, so I, I hope that you'll look at this passage in your own time. It's, it's Romans chapter 8, and we're, I'm going to begin reading in verse 26. And uh, in verse 26 we read, and, and we, it starts out with likewise. And if you remember last week, the likewise is that, that uh, all of creation and we ourselves groan, uh, looking forward eagerly to the revealing of the sons of God. In other words, we're looking to the future uh, when God sums everything up on the earth. And, and we really should. We should be really excited about what God has for us in the future. Likewise, in other words, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in the here and now, helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. And isn't that true? That, my goodness, we, we look at our own lives and our country and, and life here in the resort, and, and sometimes we, we don't even know what to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts, God, who searches hearts, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. All things, everything, the good things and the negative things, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Isn't that a precious, precious portion of Scripture? Uh, what a what a great uh, a great message from God's truth that He is always with us, and the Spirit of God is just not something that is up on the mantle or that we put our name to in our baptismal uh, certificate uh, when we are baptized or when we finish catechism or or whatever. The Holy Spirit is the third member of the Godhead of the Triunity of God. And, and as the Holy Spirit is the presence of God within us and, and around the earth. And Jesus said that, that the, one of the main things that the Spirit of God does is he convicts the world in, in three ways. And the Spirit of, of God also teaches us the things from the Word of God that God wants us to know. That Bible that you have in your hands, that's a gift from the Spirit of God. That the Spirit of God inspired men to pick up pen and to write, even in ancient days when they wrote by an oil lamp, they wrote the words that the Holy Spirit wanted them to write down, and the Holy Spirit moved them along and used their vocabulary, their personalities, their minds. That's why the books are all different. And, and if you read them, it, you, you get this different flavor in, in each book. 
And I've been reading through the scriptures this, this year, and I'm, I'm just finishing up uh, the book of Matthew. And as you read from Genesis on, every book, the Pentateuch is all written by the same person, the first five books of the, of, uh, the Old Testament. But from then on, uh, there's different authors. And you can sense that as you read it. You can just, you can hear this different personality. Well, all that is the gift of the Holy Spirit for you and for me. And that's what we're going to do today is we're going to examine this hope for today. We're going to do so in three different ways. You can see there on the screen, hope for what we do not know. Uh, that's in the here and now. Uh, where do we get comfort when we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow for sure? And then hope because of what we do know. There are things that we do know. And we have hope because of what we do know. And then lastly, hope because of what we will know. And there, there are some wonderful things coming at us in the future, and, uh, and I'm excited about that. Well, the first thing that we learn about here and what we, what we do not know is that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. And like that, the picture of that, that person uh, on the slide there, there are days that, that this is our situation. We may be concerned about family members, a child, or a grandchild, or a great-grandchild, or our nation, uh, or what we should be doing next, or, or maybe there's some changes happening in our life, and we just don't know what our next step is going to be. Well, we're very, very aware of that weakness, and that, that word weakness uh, is described by incapacity, and something has happened to us, and we are just unable to figure out what we should do next. And and we might feel weak. And that same word is used when people are dealing with a long-term illness. And that has sapped their, their strength. And so sometimes the life on this earth can be that traumatic. It can, it can sap our strength. And, and we feel like we just can't go on. And we feel very, very weak. And in those days, we're confused about what, we're, what we need to pray for. What, what direction, God, do you want me to go? What do you want me to pray? Do you want me to pray for that person or do you want me to talk to them? There are many, many things going on in our minds that we're just confused about. We are very, very aware of our human weakness and, and uh, we need help. And some biblical examples of that. In Romans chapter 7, Paul talked about his wretchedness and that he was so aware that the, the good things he wanted to do, he found himself not doing. And the very... Uh, uh, not good things that he did not want to do, he found himself doing. And he felt wretched. And isn't that true? That sometimes we, we find ourselves on a given day that, boy, we, we feel like we've, we've just, we've been a, a spiritual slacker, that we have not been able to do what we believe God wanted us to do. Or we found ourselves doing some things that we knew God would be displeased about. And so we feel wretched. And, and remember Peter in his betrayal. You remember bold Peter telling Jesus, all of your other disciples, they'll flee, they'll run away, but boy, you can count on me, Jesus. I've got your back. And yet he betrayed Jesus three times. He said, I don't, I don't know who, who he is, don't know what you're talking about. And then the cock crowed and he realized that what Jesus had told him was going to happen, he did. Now remember that Jesus said, now, now Peter... Satan has demanded to sift you at this time, but, but he said, Peter, I'm going to pray for you so that uh, when all this happens, that, that uh, you will be restored, you'll turn, and you'll be able to comfort your, your brethren. So Jesus prayed for Peter the way the Holy Spirit prays for us today. And then the book of Job, it's all about Job's trials. And, and Job, all along through that book, just could not figure out why all of these terrible things were happening to him. And so he spent much time talking to the Lord. And the Lord, in the end of the book, came to Job. He never told him why, but he told him, basically, I'll be with you. And, and, and Job reiterated his faith in the Lord, that yea, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And then lastly, there's Paul's thorn in the flesh that he describes in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, or 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And, and we don't know what that thorn in the flesh was, uh, we can guess that it had something to do with his eyes, that they were painful, that they, he had some kind of a scaly matter that he had to keep dealing with, and, and uh, it, it, it made him look sort of unsavory, and it interfered with his ability to see. And three times Paul prayed, 
God, please take this thorn in the flesh away from me. And, and three times he beseeched the Lord, please, Lord, take this away from me. And in the end, God spoke to him and said, no, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelation that I've given to you, that you're writing down, I've, I've shown you, Paul, more than I've shown anybody else, and, and to keep you from being prideful, I've given you this thorn in the flesh so that you will have this, this very debilitating physical ailment that you're going to have to deal with throughout your life, but it's for your good, not for your pain. And so Paul's thorn in the flesh, all of those things, Paul and his wretchedness, Paul and his thorn in the flesh, Peter and his betrayal of Jesus, Job and all of his trials, those are biblical characters, spiritual, wonderful, godly men that all had moments of weakness. And that's and what they did is they came before the Lord, they turned to the Lord and, and sought His presence and the Holy Spirit ministered to them. The Spirit comes to help us in our time of need. Now, that word, that, that when the Spirit comes to help us, is, and this is where translation sort of breaks down, that that one word is a combination of three words. There are three words, three Greek words, that have been welded together into one word. Three words has, has been made into one word. And it really describes uh, coming to the aid of another person to help carry your burden. And when I, when I was doing this study, it, it, uh, a picture popped into my mind. Uh, Sarah and I and, and our three kids decided to take uh, an African family with us on holiday in Zambia. And so we d decided that we would drive to, uh, through Z across Zambia and into the country of Malawi, and we would, we would camp on the shores of Lake Malawi. Now, Lake Malawi is such a large lake that it has surf, it has waves, you can't see to the other side. It's a, it's a huge, huge freshwater lake. Lots of good fishing on it and so on. Uh, and so uh, we didn't know that we were, we were sort of breaking missionary mores that, that we, we wouldn't have cared anyway, uh, but we loved this family and they had, they had one, one little boy. And uh, so we, we loaded them. We had a, a single cab pickup. And we all loaded up in there, and, and the ladies and the, and the kids uh, were in the back. The older, uh, one old, older child was up in the front with us, and away we went. And it was a, quite an adventure. But we, we had to stop in the little town of Chipata, just right at the Malawian-Zambian uh, border. And uh, we, we spent the night, and the way that we slept in the back is that we... we uh, I, bought boards and we put the boards across the top of the bed and we had a we had a what do you call it a canopy over the the bed and Sarah and I and our three kids we slept on those boards and the Soko the three Soko family they slept underneath uh, there was plenty of room for them underneath and we were all so squeezed up that when one person rolled over we all had to roll over and uh, it was it was a, a good adventure but in the morning we we needed breakfast and uh, we didn't have anything, we, we couldn't build a fire or anything like that. So Sarah and Kathy Soko, the wife of the, of the family we went with, they went into the, into the town and they bought some, some food and, and, uh, and they f filled a big, great big thermos full of tea uh, with milk and sugar in it. And as they were coming back, we watched them come back. And they were walking along sort of a, of a ditch area with a road right beside it. And they were carrying the, the, this burden together. And they had, they had a, a sack. And, and Kathy Soko had one handle and Sarah had another handle. And they were carrying along. And, and as they walked along, uh, Africans were, were walking past them. And they were amazed at this white lady and this black lady walking together, sharing this, this burden. And that's exactly the word that would have been used to describe that situation. Now, it doesn't mean that, 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 uh, that the Holy Spirit needs us to carry our share of the burden. It's the Holy Spirit doing it, but the Holy Spirit is doing it through us. And the Holy Spirit comes to help us in our time of need. So whatever you're going through right now, the Holy Spirit is there and is walking with you to, to move through it. 
And the Holy Spirit intercedes for us and, it, and it intercedes according to the will of God. And that word intercede means that you're going to a person of a much higher authority and you're making a petition for them uh, in front of them for somebody else, not for yourself, but for somebody else. And that's what the Holy Spirit does every day in your life. Every day in your life, the Holy Spirit intercedes for you according to the will of God. Why do we say that according to the will of God? Because God has a plan for you. And, and the Holy Spirit comes with groaning too deep for words. And that, you know, I don't, we don't want to make too much of that. It just means that somebody is, is in distress and they're, they're groaning. Uh, our, our dog, Blue, right now groans all the time because he's dealing with the liver issues and arthritis. And, and, uh, and that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is coming before the Father and groaning in his compassion for us. And the Father knows what the mind of the Spirit is. The Father knows exactly, even though the Spirit's not using words. I don't think heaven needs words, do you? I think when we go to heaven, I think uh, we, we're not going to need words. So the Spirit prays for you and for me within the will of God. Now, I want you to understand that God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for my life, and the Spirit knows that plan. Now, there, uh, there are uh, groups that tell you, boy, you're going to be unhappy unless you're right in the center of God's will. Boy, uh, and you've got to work hard to make sure that you're right in the center of of God's will, or you're gonna you're gonna fail, or you're gonna be God's gonna be unhappy with you. You're not gonna be happy, and I just want to say to that, that's ridiculous. That is that is an unbiblical concept, and and it was it was not used by the Apostle Paul. If you read the Book of Acts, the Apostle Paul and his disciples were moving around on the on the in their missionary journey, and there were some times that they tried to go to a certain uh, part of the the known world, and and the Spirit said nope. Uh, other times, uh, they said the devil said no. They didn't, they didn't care. They didn't worry about it. They just continued on because they had confidence that wherever they needed to go, God would direct them. God would close a door and open a door or open a door and close another door. They didn't worry about being right in the center of God's will. They had confidence that God would keep them in the center of God's will, and that's what I believe. I believe that God has a plan for my life, and God's got a plan for your life, and he's going to work that plan out. And, and you can trust him to do that. And that's what the Spirit of God is doing. The Spirit of God knows exactly what God wants to do in your life and, and my life. He, we, he knows exactly the level of, of spiritual growth he's going he's gonna to bring us to before we exit the earth. And that's what's going to happen. God's going to do that. No matter what circumstances, I do not believe that, that, uh, that the devil or anybody else can thwart the Word of God, the will of God. God's got that plan for you. And he's going to work it out, and that's what the Holy Spirit is praying for. And God answers that prayer. So don't believe Satan's lie about God's will. Don't, don't let Satan give you anxiety. Oh my goodness, I'm not in the will of God, so all, all is bad, I, nothing's going to happen. That's nonsense. That's, that's the devil's lie. That's what he whispered in Eve's uh, ear there in the garden, that God really didn't uh, know what was going on. Don't believe that lie. Have confidence in God. And the Spirit of God is praying for you every day that, uh, that uh, the Father will, will, will waft you along in the, in the very center of His will. And there's a, and I already mentioned Paul's missionary journeys, and that's love. And Lee Westman now is going to come and he's going to sing for us uh, and uh, this wonderful song, Love Divine, and uh, the audio is going to be a little bit low but uh, don't turn your TV up because it's 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 going to come up in a in a in a real bang. So uh, let's listen to Lee Westman as he sings to us about love divine. This is the day that we are recognizing Valentine's Day. Many people give flowers, they give candy, they give jewelry, they give all sorts of things to people that they want to express their love to. But when we think of God, God gave the greatest valentine of all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Love divine, all 
encourages you and that you're very much aware of God's love for you. Now, hope because of what we do know. We've talked about how to have hope, even though we don't know what the future may, may hold. But now we know something very definite, and God promises that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. And, and I've heard that, that uh, verse misused in, in, in hospitals and besides sick beds, and maybe you've had someone's say that verse to you when you're just down in the dumps or something terrible has happened and you want to re go punch them. And, uh, and I totally understand that. But uh, this gives us some truth to hang on to. And the bottom line here is that the reason that all things work together for good is that God uses all of our experiences for our good. In other words, it, it doesn't matter uh, whether uh, what's going on in our marriage, it doesn't matter what's going on in, in our relationship with the government or authorities over us or anything that's going on in our life, whether it's joyful or whether it's sad and painful. God uses every experience for our good. Now, there's some, some boundaries here. The boundary is that this isn't said to the whole world. God isn't doing that for the whole world. He's only doing it for those who love God, those who have crossed that line of faith and trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. For all those that are in the family of God, the absolute bedrock promise is that God's going to use all the experiences of your life, good and bad, and, and use them for your good because you're, you're called according to his purpose. And, and that purpose means something that's special. And that what is special is God's greatest good. And so you need to understand that you're very special in God's eyes, that, that you are a co-heir with Christ. You are going to be with God forever, for all of eternity. And, and I really believe, and I believe that Scripture reveals to us that, that Christians are, are going to be used in eternity future in different creations of God. I don't know how that's going to happen. But I believe that God has an amazing future ahead of us that we are just we would just be astonished at if he revealed it to us. And what God is doing in your life and my life today is he is equipping us for what the task that he has for us in heaven, the position that he has for us in heaven. And so we need to trust God. Uh, and, and not, you know, sometimes we, we encounter difficult times and we go, oh, I must, I must have messed up somehow. I must have must have departed from God's will, and, and, and so now uh, I'm being punished. Well, 
We need to get rid of that. The, the trust in God that all things work together for good changes our mindset totally. That now we, 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 we can just do away with those kind of worries and instead ask, what is God teaching me in this situation? Whether it's good or whether it's bad. What is God doing? How is God conforming me to the image of Christ? Because that's the purpose. That's the good. The, the, what God is describing here is a synergy. That, and the synergy is between circumstances and God's will. They work together. God's using all the circumstances and his plans for us in the future, and that becomes a, a, a synergism that, that we can rely on and trust that God wants our very best. And, and that uh, God has a goal for your life, and he's going to use everything, no matter what it is, that comes into your life to achieve that plan goal. And you might say, well, what is that plan goal? God's good for me and God's good for you is to conform us to the image of his son. And we are, we are fellow heirs, we are co-heirs with Jesus. And God is bringing us closer and closer and closer to the image of Christ and all the things that, that he uses that comes into our life that, that will change us. Now, uh, the, there's a sequence here. God foreknew, God predestined, God called, God justified, and God glorified. This is God's plan. This is what God did for you and through you. And, I, and, and I, I'm not one that worries about what I don't understand. And I don't understand how God's sovereignty uh, uh, cooperates with, with man's free will. And I don't have to figure it out. Because I rely on God's sovereignty. And, and God predestined and God called and God justified and God glorified. And that's what God foreknew. And it didn't happen in a sequence. It had happened all at once because you were in the future. All your entire life was in, in God saw it from the day you were born to the day you take your last breath on the earth. God knew everything. Nothing in your life is a surprise to God. And, and uh, he entered your life and he called you to himself and you responded. John 44, 644 says this. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. So it, it, no, nobody on the earth, you see, the scriptures are true that we looked at in John chapter 3. There are none who seek after God. There are none who understands. So natural man isn't seeking to have a, a renewed relationship with God. The only people that are seeking to have a relationship with God are those that, that the Father's drawing. And, and so we trust God that, that uh, the Father's going to draw those that, that he wills. And, uh, and save them for the last day. In John, in verse 65 of that same chapter, and he said, Jesus said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. And then finally, uh, verse 23 of Acts chapter two, uh, uh, Peter is preaching and he's, he's telling the Jews about Jesus. And he says, this Jesus Delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. And you see the sequence there. Delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge. So foreknowledge doesn't happen without a plan. And the plan doesn't happen without a foreknowledge. And so go ahead and try to understand all about God's being. And, and good luck with that. But what we can do is we can rejoice in the fact that God has called us and he is bringing everything into our lives 100% to accomplish conformity to Jesus, to the character of Jesus. So that's, that's what we do know. We do know that God's promise is that he's going to use 100%, even those things that we just hate, to, to bring us into compliance with the, the image of the Lord Jesus. And that's, that's exciting. So let's take a moment here and celebrate that as we uh, allow the choir to lead us in a hymn, uh, More Love to Thee.
to thee. And I, I tell you, my heart just is filled with love for the Lord when we consider all that, that uh, he has promised us and, and all that he's doing for us each and every day. Now we're going to conclude this with the last little bit because the, the scriptures say there that God has called us, he has justified us, and, he, and he's glorified us. Now, we've really talked about already called and justified in previous chapters of, of Romans, but I want to call your attention to this, the reality that God has glorified you because no matter how you might feel about yourself today, God has glorified you and he's going to glorify you in, in heaven's glory. Uh, we can't imagine all that God has prepared for us in the future and all that he's going to do for us. What a, what a blessing uh, to know that God is using all the circumstances that we encounter in life to conform us to the image of God. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says this, And we all, all believers, all those who, have, who love the Lord, with unveiled face, in other words, when we, when we finally see the Lord, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being, this is what's going on in your life today, are being transformed into the same image, the image of Christ, from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. And that's what the Spirit is doing in your life. Have hope. Hope in the here and now that everything coming in, into your life has meaning. And you may feel like that, that your life that once was a fast-moving stream is now a stagnant pond. God doesn't see it that way. You see, God is still involved in your life and he's still conforming you to the image of his son. He's preparing you for eternity. So never believe for one instant, not any day, that, that your life doesn't matter to God. God knows exactly what's going on in your life. The Holy Spirit is praying for you according to the will of God. And so all we need to do is open our hearts up and to, to consider what God is trying to teach us what is he changing in our lives through this circumstance, whether it's positive or negative? Because I can guarantee and promise you he's doing something in your life. And I would say this to someone who's in a refugee camp. I believe that if the truth that we preach in, in this, from the scriptures, if it's not as applicable in a refugee camp in Sudan as it is in the American culture today, it's not truth. It's not truth. And I believe that this is true even in a refugee camp in Sudan that God is using those experiences to conform those Christians that might be in that camp uh, to the image of Christ in a way that that camp will do that would not happen in the circumstances that I encountered. We can't look at anybody else's life and judge our life by their life. God's plan for us is an individual plan and he's going to work his plan. He's going to continue to conform us to the image of his dear son. So have confidence that, in that. Don't, don't worry about that. Uh, have, have faith in that. And, and this causes me to just want to praise Jesus. That, that uh, what, what a friend he is to, to do this for us, to die for us on the cross, and to send the Holy Spirit uh, to the earth to indwell us and to bring us along in, in his life. So we're going to sing that that uh, closing him uh, and that what a, what a friend we have in Jesus.
Thank you, choir. Let's bow our heads together, and, and uh, I, I want to pray for, for you and, and myself and for uh, all who have been a part of this service this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, thank you that you intercede for us, and we know that you're interceding for us according to the will of God. And Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, we know that you love us and that your promise is that you're going to take everything happening, happening to us on a fallen, cursed earth to conform us uh, to, to the image of the Lord Jesus. And we thank you for that. Give us the eyes of faith to look at our, our lives and our circumstances, not from the standpoint of negativity as the devil wants to do for us, but that we might see it from the positive standpoint that you're using everything in our lives to conform us to the image of your dear son. Thank you for doing that. And uh, we pray that you'll be with each person who is a part of this, this uh, service. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we know that some of the audio, uh, we tried a new, something new today. We, had to, we felt like we needed to get out of the ballroom and to do our recording out here in the, in the church office. Uh, because of the internet issues in the in the ballroom, and then we were we were under the impression that they were doing some some uh, adjustment to the wiring up there, so we moved out here, and uh, so we recorded the the choir beforehand, and and that that audio is a bit problematic. So uh, just uh, stay tuned, and we'll we'll see you next Sunday. Um, and that you can count on us that somehow or other we're going to be in your living room this next Sunday. We hope that we're invited guests. There's our, our final uh, song, our chorus that we, we know so well. Go in, in peace, go in love. Let's sing that, that together. May God's blessings surround you each day. God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.